Welcome along guys, so we're uh, going to do a build video on the uh, Schumacher LD2 with the uh, wheel speed RF2 conversion kit fitted. Um, also got some option parts to add which I'll show you in a moment, but uh, we'll pull open the boxes and show you what you get. So what do you get in the box? So let's open it up and have a look. So we have a nice set of shiny wheel speed stickers, a bit of bubble wrap and lots of alloy goodness so uh, there's the uh, beautifully machined uh, gearbox halves what else have we got here let's drag this stuff out so there's the uh, new one piece rear tower that comes in the uh, ld2 conversion kit um, that's the battery o-ring hold down system that they use which is cool Obviously, with that O-ring system, you can run normal low, normal profile batteries as well as low profile. There's the rear mount for the uh, tower. Um, so that again in beautiful alloy with all the hardware included. Then there's the motor mount, and then please note um, replace the standard lay shaft spacer with the one in there. So we'll show you that when we do the build. And then we've got the uh, um, RF2 body shell, which looks awesome. And then we have da -da, the uh, lovely chassis there. So you can see, hopefully you can see that on camera there, wheel speed LD2 WSS01. So this is number one uh, off the production line. So um, there you have it. And it's got the wheel speed logo on the bottom there. Absolutely amazing piece of machining, as you can see. Um, and that's it we've got the uh, the idler gears are on their way so this is the uh, first one off the line so the idler gears will be with us next week and then we'll uh, get that uh, all built up but that's what you get in your conversion kit so these are some of the uh, option parts we're going to use during the build um, again for adjustability and durability as well so we've got the uh, alloy five degree front yokes a u4228 um, then we've got the uh, u4620 alloy front hub carriers they're very nice indeed then um, we've got to we'll move on to the steering part so we've got the um, alloy radius arms there u7404 and then we've got the center track rod there uh, again in alloy as you can see 8205 and then we've got the uh, core um, alloy servo arm there so it just replaces the servo saver in the kit um, so this is the uh, the short version which we'll need um, other servo arms do fit but just be careful with the offset because it's quite tight this um, clearance in the steering rack and you have to shim the servo correctly but there we go so they're all the bits we're going to use um, for the build so we'll open the uh, kit and crack on with that that's the front end all done as you can see went together really nicely um, quite impressed with the uh, the quality of the car and uh, no issues whatsoever so uh, like I say got a couple of option parts they've so got the uh, alloy um hubs and then c hubs as well and uh, and the obviously the steering rack as well is all alloy but uh, yeah it looks looks good so all kit setups are 550 oil in the front kit pistons and the black springs and now we'll bolt it to some wheel speed stuff so there we go so we just basically got to uh, bolt the uh, the front end on there like so so that's the uh, hardware from schumacher there and then these are the uh, wheel speed bits, so we'll just bolt these down, a little um, dab of thread lock on there just to stop them coming off, but you don't need to really. And the nice thing is they uh, include your spare O-ring, so if you did snap one, um, I haven't snapped one in sort of, I don't know, ever to be fair, in a couple of years, so no problem there, but always nice to have a, a spare one just in case. So now we'll get this all bolted up and I'll show you it done. There we go, that's the uh, front end bolted on the car. I've just put the O-ring on there just to show you, but um, Obviously, it's under quite a bit of tension, so just um, when you're sort of leaving the car and not racing it, it's best just to uh, to unhook it like so. You can leave one side on. It just stops the um, the uh, plastic mounts here deforming. So when you're in the you know when you're not running the car, just leave it like that, and your battery in there, and you'll be fine. Um, one other thing to note is. Um, yeah, you put the shim in as per normal on the, uh, you know, with the stock instructions. Um, so just don't forget to put that in. Um, and, uh, and the rest of it bolts up as per normal. So now um, we get to the fun stuff. Um, so we'll get on, um, build the diff, the shocks, um, and the drive shafts, back end, etc. Um, which I'll get on video. And there's a few little tips when building the gearbox, which I'll share with you. And we'll crack on with it. But so far, so good. While well, we've got the uh, wheel speed box open, I'm going to build up the uh, rear tower, which I'll show you in just a moment. 
So there's the uh, rear tower built up. Um, the hardware here, so those four basically um, bolt the um, rear uh, shock tower to the gearbox. So one in there, one in there, and then two down in from the top. And then there for your shock mounts and there for your ball stud mounts, okay? But uh, yeah, lovely, uh, lovely piece of kit as you can see. Nice thick carbon and the, the recess goes on the back there. So, uh, so there we have it. So we'll uh, crack on uh, with the gearbox now. So just unpackaged the uh, gearbox here just to show you guys and uh, um, before we crack on with building the gear diff up etc. Um, so all the hardware here comes in with a wheel speed kit. So these um, M Fiber 6s um, bolt the uh, gearbox to the chassis there so they're all included. And you get three button head bolts for the gearbox to seal the halves together and then the uh, countersunk um, bolts I talked about um, which are fitted here, they come in with the wheel speed kit as well. Okay, so just to clarify that point there as well. Um, there's three sizes here. So the um, shortest button head goes here. Um, the long one goes up the top there. And then the medium size one goes in the middle there. Okay, so we'll crack on with the uh, gearbox build now and then update you once it's finished. So now we're going to get on with fitting the um, motor mount to the gearbox, um, get the diff built up. We're just missing an O-ring from that, um, so just got to wait for that to arrive. And uh, then we can obviously get the gearbox put together. But in the meantime, we'll get the um, motor mount fitted up, um, show you that. Obviously, all the hardware is in there, as you can see. Um, and then uh, we'll get the uh, lay shaft in, slipper clutch, etc. Um, and then I'll show you a little tip when we do it. So we've opened up the motor mount bag and got the pieces laid out here. So here's your motor mount. Um, please note that uh, this is the stock um, lay shaft spacer and this is the one that comes in the wheel speed kit. So you have to run this one. It's slightly taller and obviously you can see the colour difference there as well. So you don't mix that up. So we won't be needing that bit. So that can off it goes. And then um, these cap head um, screws there for your uh, mounting your motor. So they go in there and there. And then you've got your three button head, um, which go in there. And then this one is your lower motor mount one there. And just a, a tip, it's worth thread locking that one. The rest of the gearbox is fine, but um, it's worth doing that one as it can come loose now and again. So worth keeping a check on that one when you're running the car. Okay, so we'll get that all uh, bolted up now and uh, show it with the uh, low shaft fitted. So we've got the uh, bearings pressed in the uh, gearbox cases and you can see there, um, using the kit shim um, that comes with the LD2, so obviously refer to that in your manual, plus the bearing, we've got the bearing pressed in there. Just a little tip um, when you're pushing the bearing in, if it's a little bit tight, just use your um, wheel nut driver just to sort of push the bearing around the edge and get it seated properly. Um, and then we've got the uh, wheel speed lay shaft spacer, which we're just going to slide on and then pop the slipper assembly on. So there we go, there's the slipper clutch all fitted and the uh, spur gear etc. So, uh, you know, as per the manual, you build it up, but just remember um, that the uh, space E there, you need to replace with the wheel speed space. But everything else, all the shimming etc. and all this all this part of the build there is, is as per the kit, okay? Um, so we'll pop the uh, idler gears in the uh, gearbox and then get the diff in when the o-ring arrives and then crack on with the rest of it. So uh, there's the rear wing mounts on the uh, shock tower. Just one quick tip, which hopefully you can see here. Um, I've just trimmed that off with a hobby knife, um, just so that the wing mount sits, sits nice and flush there, um, because uh, it just uh, slightly touches that button head screw. But uh, literally you just take about a mil or two off of that, and then again, stock bolts there. Um, one thing you may want to get, which I need to add, these bolts are countersunk, so, um, uh, just want to put some M3 counter sunk washers behind those, but uh, you might just want to grab a couple of those um, just to finish the car off nicely. As without them, you know, the bolts don't sit very nicely there. Or you can obviously swap those out for some button heads, but I'll, I'll grab some washers and pop that on there. But uh, there we go, that's the tower nearly done. So that's the uh, back end on the car. So, uh, all Schumacher here as per normal. Uh, again, the uh, C block bolts up with the hardware that comes in the LD2 kit, um, gone with the kit um, toe in settings at the moment. Um, these bolts here, um, they do come uh, in the kit. They're an M3 by 16 counter. So just have a look out for those in the box, have a rummage um, and uh, put some nylock nuts on. And to get the um, Ackerman on the wheel speed, instead of running the um, two mil spacer um, above, 
um, which you do on the standard LD2 kit, you run it underneath, okay? So just a, a quick tip there on that one. But uh, there you go. I'll swap those uh, nuts out for some black ones so they'll look a bit better. But there you have it. So there's the back end done, and then we're gonna move on to the rear shock tower now. So when you come to uh, this part of the build to finish off the shock tower, I just wanted to share this with you, um, as it's not sort of clear. So um, in, in the um, Schumacher kit, you get this T5760 rear shock, optional parts inside this packet is ball stud this conical spacer and then just in the kit there's a couple of these spare nuts so you'll need to use these on the rear shock tower here so i'll just show you that um so that's basically what you're aiming for so the um nylock nut sits in the recess in the tower and there's the spacer there okay if you don't use um that spacer and use the, the kit mounting one the shocks at a bit of an odd angle okay so just use that and you'll be fine and i found a couple of um, countersunk washers as well just to finish that off in silver which looks pretty cool they don't come in the kit by the way the washers so just grab some of those from your local hobby shop or online just going to finish off the rear shock tower so we're going to put these long ball studs into the uh, rear shock tower mount so these are your camber rear camber link ones so uh, you get some nylocks in with the kit um, so just pop them through and then bolt them up but just remember to use these long ones so you get good thread engagement on the nut and there we have it. So that's the uh, rear shock tower all finished up. So we've got the ball studs in there, as you can see. Um, and there we have it. So we'll uh, pop that to one side and then bolt that up to the gearbox in a bit. So we're just going to fit the uh, idler gears up. So these are um, all CNC machined idler gears. So the uh, gearbox runs really, really smooth and obviously really high precision with no sort of uh, tight spots in, etc. So we'll press the bearings into the gears and then get them fitted in the gearbox. That's the uh, gearbox all finished up. So um, yeah, up to you if you want to run some, you know, grease um, on on the diff. Uh, obviously these are nylon, so they're kind of self lubricating. But it's up to you if you want to run some some grease in it. I personally do. Um, so you can either use some of the red lithium grease that comes in the LD2 kit, or some of the black associated style grease. But up to you on that one. Don't go mad on it, but just a, a thin coating on the gears will just keep it smooth and. And running nice so personally speaking I, I will do that so I'll just chuck some grease on that but I just wanted to show you it all uh, sort of new and dry built so we'll pop a bit of grease in there pop the uh, gear case um, back together and get it mounted in the car so that's the um, gearbox bolted in so what I like to do is just as you can see the screws aren't snug down yet but I like to get them uh, all of these ones in first um, and then then get it, get get the thread started and then um, on this uh, motor mount one, we'll just pop a little bit of thread lock on there and then we'll just nip them all up, obviously working in diagonals where you can so the gearbox sits uh, nicely on the chassis. Then we'll flip it over and pop the shock tower on. So off camera, um, did the turnbuckles there. Um, I've just wound them on, um, sort of halfway on the thread there just to get, uh, get them started. Obviously we'll do the camber once the car's built up. Um, so yeah, you get the hardware. Um, so these are... M3 batens. Um, so you have two that go in the top of the tower and then two in the sides. What I like to do personally is put the top two in, um, it pulls the tower down and then do the two side ones. One other tip uh, worth noting is that uh, you can see that you can't quite get a, um, a, a direct line on to do these, uh, do these two particular ones up. So having a, a ball ended um, driver certainly helps for this part. Obviously you can, um, you know, quickly whip the tower off if you haven't got one of these ball ended drivers, but it might be worth getting one for your, for your, your toolbox just to, uh, um, you know, for, for diff maintenance, etc. So there we go. We've got that snug down and then we'll just jump onto this one. And there we go. So we'll snug those down and then, um, and then we'll do the side ones there. Right, the rear tower's on, as you can see. Um, turnbuckles all sorted, so they're uh, all in line and roughly about right. Obviously, uh, need to get it set up when the ride height's done and the shocks are on. Um, off camera, I've built up the shocks, so they simply just pop on, and then we're about done. So that concludes the build on the uh, Will Speed LD2 conversion. Um, dropped together really nicely. Uh, all the Schumacher stuff was great, and uh, obviously the Will Speed stuff. Um, goes together really really nicely so i hope you found the uh, the tips useful um, for your build and hope you really enjoy um, driving your cars and uh, keep an eye on the wheel speed racing website as well as the facebook group there'll be setups coming there from the team drivers um, as well as the the customer cars as well 
Um, and uh, for those over in the uh, across the pond in the US, uh, Wheel Speed USA will, will be again supporting the car and having the kits and spares, etc. I'm sure they're uh, on the water now coming over there. Anyway, I um, hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you trackside. Cheers.